Welcome to Excel and Finance video number 28. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 5 or our PDF notes for chapter 5, click on the link below the video and then scroll down to the finance section and you can download these files. Hey, this video 28, we got to talk about interest rates and we got to talk about APR, which is required by the Truth in Lending Act annual percentage rate, and then the actual real rate, or effective annual rate. All right, we'll, and then we're going to see a bunch of uh, cool problems where knowing how to go from APR to effective rate, or effective to APR, or period rate also back and forth can help us solve particular problems. Let's start with period rate. So far in this class, we've always referred to annual percentage rate as I, but now we can refer to it as APR. APR is usually required by law on loan contracts, for example. Truth, required by the Truth in Lending Act, this is Congress saying that APR has to uh, appear in certain contracts. Now, APR, we're given that 12% or 0.12. Anytime we have compounding periods greater than one, then annual percentage rate and effective annual rate, rate will be different. Let's go ahead and first calculate our period rate. We've done this, you know, 30 times already in this class. We take our annual rate divided by a number of compounding periods. So there's our period rate. Now it's interesting, the APR, annual percentage rate, is defined this way. Take the period rate, that's I divided by N, and multiply it by the number of periods, right? So as an example, if we know the monthly rate is this, and we know N is 12, we can go ahead and calculate the annual percentage rate. This times 12, and that'll give us 6% or 0 0.06. Now here, if this is the rate, this no, let's go down here, sorry. Let's just say APR is 18%, right, on a credit card, compounded monthly. Now, you always got to look at your contract because it could be compounded in all sorts of different ways. But in this example, N is 12. Now, this is the one required by law, right? But any time you have an APR with an N greater than 1, then the actual effective annual rate is greater. The effective annual rate is the rate that when multiplied um, times some amount gives you the future value. But it's if this is 12 times per year, you know, we have to do our formula. We have to figure out the period rate, add 1, and then raise it to the n uh, and multiply that by our present value. But effective annual rate will, in essence, show us the real rate, which is always going to be greater than 18% when n is greater than 1, and it will allow us to multiply just this effective rate times our original principal, and that will give us the interest. We won't have to mess around with all the n and everything. So let's see how to calculate the effective annual rate. Equals, and this should look familiar, 1 plus our period rate, that's the annual rate divided by number of compounding periods. And since we're doing interest rates here, so far in the class we've always had an exponent of n times x, but this is just the annual rate, so we don't need x, we don't need years, we just take caret n. Now that'll give us the amount 1 plus the actual rate. And if we're using this to multiply times the uh, original present value or principal amount, that 1 gives us the original amount, and the extra little bit there, 0.1956, gives us the extra interest earned. So to actually figure out the rate, what do you do? You subtract 1. And that's our formula. Now we can compare these two and clearly see, I think I have something written over here, but we can clearly see that the when n is greater than 1, we're always going to get a, I'm not fixing this correctly. Anyway, anytime you have n greater than 1, this rate's always going to be bigger. Now, 
we use the um, we used our math formula, but there's a function called effect. So we're going to try that effect. There's a little drawback to the effect, though. It just wants the nominal rate. And by the way, APR can be called nominal rate, quoted quotes rate. That's supposed to be quoted rate, stated rate, annual interest rate, and also others. So in Excel, nominal means APR. So I'm clicking there, comma and NPERY. Oh, that's different. We've seen NPER, so this is slightly different. I said before that all of these arguments uh, in these financial functions are all the same. Occasionally, they're slightly different. But NPERY just means number of compounding periods. And that'll do it. That'll just give us our 19. Now, the one problem, and we'll run into this uh, in just a little bit when we do our money tree example, this argument right here has to be an integer. If it's not, it truncates it. So if we were to give this 24.4, uh, actually put that number in there, it would only take the 24. So sometimes we get a, um, a slight error with this function. If this is supposed to be include a decimal, um, it just won't do it. It truncates it. In this case, see, 12 is a integer. So there's no problem whatsoever. Now some notes. Never do EAR divided by N, only APR. So when we're given an APR, you know, we're given our rates uh, in the contract or in the ad. It says 4% uh, compounded 365 times a year or 10% or compounded monthly. That's the APR in the end. Never do this. This doesn't work. APR equals EAR, effective annual rate, only when N equals 1. And EAR is always going to be greater than APR when N is greater than 1. Now let's go over and look at an example. I want to prove that we could take this rate and multiply it by our original uh, present value or our original invested amount and get the same exact answer as if we did our fancy formula with APR and N. So let's come over here, this sheet 6.5. Let's calculate our period rate equals and I'm going to calculate my EAR, 1 plus the period rate, caret 12 minus 1. I actually, over time, have tended to always do this formula. So when I run into a situation where uh, this is a decimal, which we'll see later, um, I just use the formula because it won't give me an error, whereas the effect function will. So there it is, APR effective annual rate. Now, our goal here is I want to do future value with APR and N equals 12. So I'm going to go equals. And we'll use the future value functions. How about that? So the rate, I'm going to do, or our period rate, sorry, comma, our NPER, comma, and this present value. Now here I just said we'll do, we'll do it, leave dollars in for one year. So the the uh, number of compounding periods will be 12, because there's 12 months in one year. All right, so there's our future value. We get $126.83. Now, let's do it again. But now the rate, we're going to use the year, comma, and the NPER is 1. Now here's this is the example of why the definition of EAR, the effective annual rate, is given these two inputs, APR and N, it'll give us the rate that will calculate any future value with a compounding period of 1, comma, comma, and then the present value is this. Now what's so nice about um, effective annual rate as compared to APR is what? It actually shows you the true rate. This one is kind of hidden because there's some interest in there that we're either going to earn or for, you know, if it's debt, we're paying, right? This shows you a more truthful number. And that's why it's kind of ironic that the APR is required by law. Well, who made the law? Congress. Who influenced Congress people? Well, the banks. So that's why APR is required on loan documents, not this one. Because this one will show you the true rate. And it will always be more when there's more compounding periods. We have an example in a couple, I think number 10 here. We'll do the effective annual rate for uh, a money tree 
loan, one of those short-term loans, and we'll see that there's a huge difference between this one and APR. But here we can see there is a difference. It's not that much. Now our next example, we want to go over to 9, and we want to we want to compare. So we have two savings accounts. We have an APR of 11% compounded four times a year, or 10.75 compounded 365 times a year. So which one do you actually want? Well, we want the one that will give us the most interest, right? So the way you can do this is you calculate year, because year you can compare. They're both one compounding period per year. This is 4, 365, so it's hard to tell. So I'm going to come here and do my formula for each one of these. 1 plus And uh, remember, this is just for one year we're comparing rates. So I did 1 plus the, com the uh, period rate raised to the number of periods per year minus 1. OK, so 11.46. We'll do this one here for this next rate. I just love being able to do this, right? So now I can go in and not get tricked by uh, whatever advertising. I can just calculate it myself and say, OK, I know which one I want. I want this one because this one's a little bit bigger. Now, in this circumstance, we can use the effect because there's no uh, decimal here. And our, again, in our next example, we will see a decimal. So I'm going to say this. That's the nominal rate, APR, comma, NPERY, that one right there. And then this one. So whether you use the formula or the function, the built-in function, you can see we get the same number. So our conclusion, if we want to earn more interest, use this one right here. This, uh, OK, so uh, now let's go over to the most brutal example. Brutal means this is really terrible. This is uh, not what you want to do. You do not want to go to you know, whatever they're called. Like I call this money tree are us loaning, you know, where you go in and uh, you give them a check amount. You write a check for $225, and they give you cash today of $200. And then 15 days later, they cash the check. Now think about that. How much interest did you pay? $25. Well, let's go ahead and use our basic knowledge of um, comparing the part to the whole to figure out what our interest rate is. We can, we can eye it here, $225 extra interest compared to this $200. But the thing is, when we calculate this, this will give us the period rate. This will give us 15-day period rate. So I'm going to do this all in one formula. And remember, we earlier in chapter 00 did our formulas for change. What is the uh, percent change? We have an end amount and a begin amount. So I'm simply going to take the end divided by the begin minus 1. And in chapter 00, we, we saw the, the deductive proof for why that's true. 12.5 percent. Hmm, that seems like a lot. But an annual rate, it wouldn't be that much, right? If it was an annual rate for a credit card, it wouldn't be so bad, right? Unless you went to BECU, you know, then that would be bad. BECU only tar charges what six, seven percent. Okay, so 15-day rate. Hmm, there's 365 uh, days in a year. Before we can before we can actually figure out, um, actually, we can figure out the APR right off the bat. Uh, except for we don't know how many periods there are, right? 15 days. We know that there's 15 days. But how many 15-day periods are there in a 365-day year? Well, to figure out how many periods, that's the number of 15-day periods in one year, we say equals. 365 divided by 15. That tells us how many periods there are, because you need to know how many periods in order to calculate APR and EAR. Here's our decimal, and that's why sometimes our uh, using the effect function, where this argument right here is truncated, what this will do, and I'll, we'll, we'll look at it, we'll calculate it with the effect, and it just it's going to take the 24, not the 0.33. All right, APR. Now we can calculate our APR. There's our period rate times the number of periods. And that's pretty terrible, right? That alone there, you're like 304%. Isn't that against the law? 
uh, I guess not. They're doing it, right? But here's the more painful truth. Let's calculate EAR. Equals, and I'm going to 1 plus, and what is our period rate? 12.5% uh, or 0.125. Close parenthesis, and our caret, and our number of periods, minus 1. So 1,000. 656%. That doesn't seem legal, does it? it happens all the time. Pretty terrible. Um, too bad there's not a law that prevents that. Uh, the, anyway, if there was a law, the banks would figure a way to get around it. Let's go ahead and do uh, effect. The the moral of the story is just don't go, don't go do this. If it exists out there and they always seem to figure out ways to, to do this, just don't go out and take a short-term loan because you're losing money. OK, the nominal rate, that's our APR. So right here, nominal is APR and NPER. Sorry, it's, it's going to be approximately true, but not quite because it'll take the 24. So still, that's pretty terrible. This is a little bit more terrible. All right, um, and this is not an uncommon example, so it should, should bother you when you, you see this. But knowing finance is good information. All right, um, let's look at our last example. Sometimes we know year, effective annual rate, and we need to figure out APR. Now, we're, I'm going to show you the math just briefly. I'm even, not even quite sure why. Actually, we could go over to the, the uh, PDFs. I have all of this here with some good notes. All the examples we just did. The uh, loaning tree example. Uh, is a little bit different. I chose 25 days here. And you can see we got 2,500% when we did it that way. Uh, here's our example here. And you can see I show you the, the math here of how to do it with math. The problem is, is unless n is less than 5, if it's less than 5, you can do the math. Otherwise, you have to do something called iterating, which means you have to plug in numbers until you zero in on the answer. And that's what our um, function that we'll see will do called nominal. But just for a moment, I want to type in this. We'll do it real quick. You can just see it once and then forget it. Here's our, and there's the proof for it. We went from our formula, right? This is a formula. Uh, given, and then we went from that and solved it just for the I or the APR. All right, so we're going to take our ear, add 1, close parentheses, and then caret, open parentheses, 1 divided by n. And then from that, we have to subtract 1 and do a close parentheses. Now let's make sure I did that right. Uh, not quite. Oh, well, that gives us the period rate. And so to calculate from that the period rate, we have to multiply it times our number of periods. That, remember, the definition of APR is period rate times n. Now, the nominal function, nominal. Oh, look, it's just like effective, except for it says effective rate and NPR. And guess what? This function also truncates that. Um, so there you go. And sometimes you know that you have this effective annual rate. And actually, in a later video, we will use this trick to great effect. And we're going to have an investing scenario that's quite complicated. And we'll need to go back and forth between solving for APR and EAR. So here, this is just the, um, uh, the, the math of it. Here's the ERA, and we solve for APR. Again, an example later, we'll have to use the nominal because our n will be greater than 5. All right, um, that is a bunch of cool things about interest rates. When we come back in our uh, next video, we will uh, start talking about annuities, cash flow streams that are of equal amount, and the distance between each payment is equal in time. All right, we'll see you next video.